Yeah. That's hey, very guys. appropriate that we're talking about artists and art teachers and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. art for this discussion. <laughs> Let's get into it. I'm sad that Sue isn't here because she's always so lively. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. are we ready? Are we yeah. ready yeah. for this? Somebody, somebody want to do the clapboard hands? Here we go. Okay. Okay. Our movie Rachel. this week. Yes. Wait, wait, what movie. are we talking about? We watched a movie called Faces Places, which is a documentary style film um, by the 90 year old artist director Agnes Varda and her collaborator JR, who's a photographer and muralist, you might say. And um, they're kind of an unlikely pair, but they team up and travel through rural France and make art together and film the process. And um, it's just really heartwarming and a fun experience. And that was our pick, my pick this week. And let's see, what, what do we launch into right away? Feelings or... Yeah, like um, overall impression. I will say that I was uh, immediately charmed by the illustration, like kind of the intro illustration. I don't know what that is, but like the same thing in Boy, where they have the, like the children's drawing, yeah. drawing like transitions, but like, I love it. Apparently <laughs> I'm just a sucker for that. So I really like that. And, and it did start off so good. And I think my expectation was just to be like, happily entertained and i feel like that that that's was it. my experience yeah that's it. it definitely did that like it was it was just cute i don't, I don't know it's just fun and like you say heartwarming like it's just a very upbeat positive um movie and it's just it's like a buddy comedy or slash road trip movie that's a documentary um about these two pretty different artists just traveling around France doing their thing. Um, it, it was, I, I really enjoyed the experience. Like I, I enjoyed watching it. Like I, I liked the people. I liked the way they interacted. I liked the way it was all presented. And I really liked what they were doing with, with the art. So, so I just learned this in my like, research right before we started, the, the backstory, like, for, for both of these people, because I, I didn't know who either of them were mm -hmm. um, when we were watching the movie. Um, but JR is, that's not his real name, that's a pseudonym. Um, he's a, he's a, so he calls himself a photographer slash graffiti artist. And, and this is what he does. Like he takes photos of people and pastes them onto the sides of buildings and stuff. He's the guy who started the Inside Out project, um, which I don't, I don't know if you guys remember that. You remember a couple of years ago here in Yakima when they pasted those big um, photos mm -hmm. like of people's faces up on the sign of up on the side of Ron's coin and cork coin. Coin and book. Coin and book. Yeah. Coin and book. Is this Sorry, I, I, this uh, like he sells coins and wine? <laughs> That no, just, cork. Cool. just like sheets of cork. For <laughs> all your artist's needs. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I remembered that project, but not by name when you were mentioning Me neither. Name. And then yeah. I was, of course, thinking about that project as I was yeah. watching. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. <laughs> but that's like he, so he's the one who came up with the idea and started it. He won the TED Prize, um, which is like a, at that point, it was a hundred thousand dollar prize for like the best idea, basically. Is that one um, through TED Talks? Yeah, yeah, through okay. the TED organization. Um, and so he won that, and that was what that was the money he used to start this this project. And and you know, and it was always took a hundred thousand dollars, and he figured out how to get a giant printer in the side of his van. Yeah. He drove around. He's got multiple vans like that. Like there are, 
a few of them around the world, apparently. It was also um, just so cute. <laughs> it looked like a camera. Yeah. I'm easily impressed by things. Gex. I loved it. Yeah, I loved little, it in like, the opening camera. credits. Um, yeah. I was like, to oh, see that it was a so real cute. thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm so excited. Um, so his, <laughs> yeah. So so the Inside Out project is like basically exactly what we saw in this mm-hmm. um, in this movie. Like it is uh, taking photographs of people's faces, like usually close up photos, close up portraits, and printing them on huge posters and pasting them on the side of buildings. I mean, it's it's people. The faces are people who are local to the area. Um, and it's been used, like this is a global project, but it's been used in a lot of different ways depending on um, where where it is. Mm-hmm. It's been used in like Venezuela, it was used to um, like call attention to violence against women. Um, in oh, cool. Pakistan, I think they I think what they did, they pasted them on the roofs of buildings. They pasted children's faces as a uh, like a statement against drone strikes. Um, oh, very interesting. I didn't yeah, think of that. So, so that's I mean that that's who Jr. is, and like that's the backstory behind mm-hmm. like what they're doing in this movie. It is a it, it's it, it's based on or stems from the Inside Out project. So I yeah I had no idea who she was either. I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was really interesting to read about her. She's a photographer. I mean, we picked up on that, but she mainly, or she's best known for being a director. And she, she's considered the mother of French New Wave. Um, so she's like a really, really well-known director. Um, from, I can't say that I've ever watched any French New Wave. Yeah, when I hear that, I'm all here. I think is Jean-Luc Godard. Like that's, and you know, then he was mentioned several times in, the, in this movie mm-hmm. um like that I, that's i thought it was cool um i don't know much about new wave film but i did see a little bit about her style where she just um took all of these photos and wanted them then to tell a story in film and it, she wasn't like trained in um, making movies but she just like went for it and put together movies and did things that were unique like um on site filming which was a challenge in the 50s instead of like being in somewhere where controlled sound and light she was like actually on site doing new things and bringing in i think new actors that were like not um well known just kind Mm -hmm. of random people that (laughs) try this thing with me okay yeah (laughs) let's get this done Mm -hmm. So that did you have any that I feel like that that kind of just like um mix of things really leads to innovation so it makes sense she's like the mother of a genre mm-hmm. yeah that's how it happens yeah and she seemed she's just so cool like in, <laughs> in this documentary like she's just the way she handles everything that happens mm-hmm. um, yeah one of my favorite um and yes moments is when there's um one uh, one man i think it's when they're doing the train the train of her like toes and her mm-hmm. eye and then that man is like why 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 do this and i just loved her calm explanation um and i can't even remember a lot of her words but she just had such a like take time to talk about art with this man Mm-hmm. that I really liked. The interview aspect of this whole film is so interesting and but I do kind of count this one up to just like cultural differences between like just the way French people interact versus like what is American considered polite in America because um like one of, one of the notes I took is just like I love how the people she interviewed asked her questions too or like something that would be so like rude to him is like like, why are you doing this? Like, yeah, like, very so rude to an American, but like in a French, it was it was not taken that way, obviously. So the cultural difference, but I liked, I liked that it it felt more engaged for them. You know, there there weren't just like pieces to use in these art installations. They were engaged and interested and invested. Yeah, like mm-hmm. active participants. 
Mm -hmm. And then like everybody who like, like so JR and Anya is kind of rolling into your town and like slap a bunch of huge photos up on your buildings. And, mm -hmm. and like everybody is super into it, which again, you know, it's like, this is what, they're the ones making the documentary. So yeah, well, but they also had that girl who she was like, I don't know how I feel about like the fact that I did this, you know, mm -hmm. they, the fact that they yeah. showed that too was really good because it's, it shows all, all parts of the spectrum. While, while her kids are taking selfies in front of it. And, yeah, tickling her toes. Yeah. <laughs> tickle, tickle, tickle. Oh, that's so great. I really loved one of the early profiles, Janine, the miner's daughter. I thought she just seemed like so into it. Like mm -hmm. there's like the scene where they're rolling by and she's standing out on her step. And I can't remember if she's reading something, but she's just so into it and posing um, with like the lace. Uh, yes, yeah, really great that over her. Yeah. Shoulder, her little. Um, and her story was cool. I liked the kind of historical part to that where then there are all these community members coming out and talking about what they remember of their dads in the mines and um, that it seemed like a really a real source of pride for people to see the miners and kind of remember that history mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then Janine is just so cool that she's like I'm the last one I'm gonna stay here mm -hmm. and um, um, I love that story when, yeah when she stepped out too and saw it's like oh damn yes yeah. Walks across the street, turns around, and it's like, whoa. Which I can yeah. it was huge. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was a huge face on the I was wall. very, very impressed with their pace. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like he's pasting the work up. Like um it seems so natural. Almost as soon as it was done, it looked like it had already it had been there for years. Yeah. You know, like it's it just was right. Meant to be there, you know. Mm -hmm. so I was I was very taken with that entire aspect of it too. Uh, I like okay. it makes me go paste. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The gross part was definitely the eye part. Oh, oh my god. god. That was so Ooh. such a surprise. I was like, oh my goodness. I did not mind like watching her get stuck with a needle. Oh, I have a story to tell you guys later. Oh dear. <laughs> that explains it. And but, then when um, they spliced in the, the... slice. Ooh. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. <laughs> Like, I did mean to say, you know what? The movie did distract me enough from the rest of, like, I kind of forgot about it until you mentioned it again. Yeah. I was going to look up to see how they did that so I could, like, calm myself down. Because <laughs> that was, who visceral. I did like that they brought in, because that kind of, that was a chapter, it felt like, where they were talking about um, her body failing like her eyes the mm -hmm. shaky letters that they put out in the stadium and then she makes them shake to represent what she's experiencing I thought that was a cool um just like exploration of what it must be like as you get older and the way you've always expressed yourself kind of has to change but then she finds a way to still do it like teaming up with JR um mm -hmm. and even she's talking about like taking the pictures of the fish and it's blurry she can't totally see um but she's still making art I, there was something really inspiring about that and i liked the reality of just dealing with things like your body failing yeah not glossing over it or trying to mm -hmm. hide or ignore the fact that her eyes are are going Mm -hmm. And yet they're still doing like such the whole theme of the movie is just so positive and their all of their art is so positive and um, it was nice to have both of those pieces, but there was definitely a happy feeling for me, even despite the struggle. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I will say that like, <laughs> you know, the very the second note that I took. You can tell when I take notes because then I will actually refer to my notes. <laughs> uh, the second note I did take is like, like right off the, the illustrations, that when they were talking about like kind of why they were doing this project. Um, and just like right off the bat, it like I already almost started tearing up because like the whole aim of theirs 
is just another like kind of extension of connection like they're trying like she's really trying to form these connections with people and i think like right now in the midst of isolation too it's just like something that is so especially poignant where i'm just like oh connecting like connect yeah. people <laughs> storytelling sharing these experiences it's uh it was i think that is that is kind of like what like my the main positive that i took that i took away from it just because i think that is also something so that i so desperately need apparently yeah yeah like i completely agree with you like i feel so isolated from just the people around me. not the, not the people i know you know not mm -hmm. my friends but just like driving down the street you know it's like i i feel so separated from the other people in car you know just just the random people around me and this like this movie is about connecting with the random people ar around mm -hmm. you i also really liked the um the factory workers i think that was another cool example of connection where all these people work the same factory but they might be on different shifts and so i thought that was fun that they all come together that was one where I really liked the end product, like of mm -hmm. all of their hands, like reaching together. Yeah. And that was a cool um, example of connection to me too. All the different pieces wow. in that team. It's kind of ironic, but I think my absolute favorite of all the installations was the very first one with the bread. Like the the one long line of bread with like everybody biting into mm -hmm. it, like that. I don't something about that image on the on when they pasted all the photos up on the wall, like that one, just got me. Like I just I just loved it. What did you guys think of the end when they try to go see um, Godard and then he shows them up, and then they sit at the lakeside the the not being able to see godard was weird like and i couldn't i couldn't quite figure out how to make of it because it it all felt a little bit staged yeah um but i'm not i'm not sure that i'm not sure that it was and i don't have any reason to think that it was it just it felt that way a little bit I agree. Uh, it did feel very sage, but throughout this entire thing, and they do like credits, like part of this was written by, so some of their state, their conversations that were kind of presented as candid were obviously scripted. Right. Which I meant, it doesn't bother me. It's not bad. Um, but so I agree that it felt staged. Like, I don't know, that could have been a genuine interaction with Jean-Luc Godard but i don't know but also they are very much they keep foreshadowing the fact that she wants jr to remove his glasses at the end and then he does and i was like this was a very clear setup yeah yeah, yeah. and like, i was like i don't was, know <laughs> yeah the, that was the, absolutely the, scripted i guess i don't know what kind of ending what the dream ending would have been for this movie and so yeah. it's it was a little like a little too cutesy mm -hmm. and it's funny because and yes, talks about like she wanted random, unplanned interactions. She wanted to leave some things to chance, but then that did the ending felt so planned out, and it it didn't um, connect with me the way the rest of their art did. Um, but then I'm like, well, I mean, how else would you end it? And if you want yeah. this cute little scripted I, ending that's cool yeah. too but i will say that she did seem genuinely very nervous about seeing him again you know yeah. like kind of like when they yeah. talked about on the train ride when they're waiting in the bar before so mm -hmm. i was like that's why i'm like i don't know i don't know i think i wanted just don't know <laughs> about i wanted her story mm -hmm. yeah. yeah about seeing godard again yeah gotcha. i didn't understand i wondered if like if you're french if you know um enough about godard and his i don't know i felt like i wanted more of the story like okay yeah she explains a little bit but i don't really get um her relationship to him and why 
why he why she wants him in this documentary and i don't know i just was curious and um i wanted more information i think to make sense of it i will say a lot of this i i don't want to say this was this to me it seemed like a, a goodbye tour for her but it was she was revisiting a lot of memories yeah. and like so when they went to the minor town she had those postcards and then she was able to find someone who had the original picture and then she like um in Normandy where she went revisited these spots where she took photos mm -hmm. um and visited the graves of some photographers she worked with um and she directed I can't say his name I keep wanting to say Gardot oh Gardot, Gardot. Gardot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she directed him in her short film, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, that, that was him, like, taking his dark glasses. Yeah, off. okay. Yeah. I don't know. I just wanted, I guess, to double check, because I like to doubt myself. Um, so, I mean, I, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 so, like, to me, like, at least that connection of, like, her, like, trying to revisit these key things, and, like, the one, I don't know, subject of her memories that's still alive, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I could I could see the the intention and the desire behind it, mm -hmm. the drive. But yeah, I've, I've I really, hope they connected. I know. <laughs> that mean. She has it since passed cool. away. Um, in I think twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen, yeah. If he blew yeah. her off, that was the last time they had the chance to meet. Well, yeah. well this this movie came out in two thousand seventeen, so like he got put on notice big time <laughs> uh, so yeah. or they all you know got together and laughed after they rapped and he's like i don't want to be on camera but let's hang out <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i see you brought me some brioche <laughs> yeah. this was such a fun documentary style film mm -hmm. but i feel like it is a definitely a different feel than the documentaries i've seen screened at sagebrush before where they're I want to say there it almost feels like there's no point like there's kind of that ephemeral quality the same way that the art is maybe there one day and gone the next and then there's there's no um I would say there doesn't feel like there's a an overarching um, message yeah or, message yeah. but I I just think it's so positive and um I I would screen it at a film festival um what do you guys feel that same way that it it's missing like a a message or that's kind of beside the point and then would you screen it at sagebrush i margaret morgan you go ahead I've, I've got thoughts on this but i want to hear what you okay um i would screen it um i think the the kind of poignant could like run through theme of connection is relevant enough today that mm -hmm. I would want to screen it because it did leave me feeling uplifted and like even if I you know you can't go out and experience those connections right now it's it's almost a reminder it's like hey no it is still possible <laughs> remember people do do this mm -hmm. uh, so like kind of on that alone I would want to screen it but for me watching this like I want to get out and like create I want to like you know go take photos or totally legally put up you know posters with we paint somewhere yes <laughs> legally of course it's not street art or whatever <laughs> anyway um like is, it, it, is there a way to legally do it or is it ever legal it's 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 the, you're not supposed to put up posters without permit you know poster okay. bill kind of thing anyway uh, um like it it <laughs> It makes me want to go out and create um and i i to me that's enough it's like mm -hmm. we are for the film festival it's like we want to screen it's like we want to have this conversation i would argue that creating art is a conversation you know so even if um i i do think that there is enough to this movie that we would be able to have a conversation about it like in the moment but the fact that too it has the potential to like get people out there and doing Mm -hmm. I think I think that counts. So I'm a yes. I like it. Clayton, yeah, what I, do you think? I, I like what Morgan was saying. I so my 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 takeaway after watching it was no, was a no. Um just because of like you were saying, Rach, like there it's mm -hmm. it's a very enjoyable experience. It's 
fun to watch, but I just, I didn't come away from, come away from it with a, like a clear theme or message or, um, you know, call to action as, as cliche as that is. Um, and, and so I just, I just have a hard time figuring out where and how to present it, but it's not, it's not that it doesn't have merit. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. And this, it's, um, extremely well regarded. Like I'm genuinely surprised by, by how, um, highly rated and re well reviewed mm -hmm. and it was nominated for an Oscar in 2017 when it came out. Um, I'm genuinely a little surprised by that, um, but not, I don't think that it doesn't deserve it. It just, uh, for, for me, it, uh, it's just kind of static, weirdly enough, for a, for, for a road trip documentary. Um, it's I yeah I think it's that it's that lack of a central um, moving message, and, yeah. and maybe that's just me like not not getting the message. Um, that's I say that's I, very a very real possibility, and I really do like what you say, Morgan, about just the the connection. Um, the connecting with people being a strong enough message because that that did resonate with me and i um i could see that that would be something that we could we could take and really build on mm -hmm. um, i feel almost right in between you guys because my brain had similar um reactions as clayton where i was looking for like what's the main idea here but then morgan you're argument was so made so much sense and I actually I had a fun time just imagining a docs screening of this where then there are guest art at local artists like we would we have so much connection with local artists and Larson Gallery like it would just be a cool um, organic uh, collaboration um, and my brain just immediately clicked through those things started planning. and I yeah started <laughs> planning I guess it would kind of depend in the past we've had kind of a theme for um the film festival like people making change in their community and this i feel like could could be a filler um for whatever you need it to be and and it, it is just so positive and um i say i think this art connection connection is probably going to have a pretty uh strong reason to be a theme just yeah. kind of in a coming yeah coming month Years, who knows? <laughs> and for a very valid point. <laughs> for people now, like not even thinking about if we would one day screen it. For now, it's such a fun watch. Mm -hmm. um, that I think that makes it worth it too. Hey, you uh, you got the Monday glooms. <laughs> watch this. Watch this. Yeah. You only for cry sure. a little bit, but in a good way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Happy tears. Uh -huh. <laughs> we we could even get the people who are involved with. The Yakima Inside Out installation. Maybe. Yeah, that, yeah. That would be a good, a good time. A good connection. <laughs> connection, uh, maybe, and it could be now. Good times. <laughs> this has been a good time. That's my natural <laughs> wind down. <laughs> Wrap it up. So you're saying was, this has been a good time, and then we cut places. it there. Yeah. <laughs> This is my scripted ending. Morgan, will you please remove your lenses for us? <laughs> You're so fuzzy. <laughs>